Hey everyone, welcome back to Geek With Deb. Today I'm doing another interview for you all. Today I'm bringing in through Zoom another interview. This one's with Trish Raynone. I have yet to come up with a word for these people, but I do consider myself one of them, uh, and Trish is as well. We are the people who I believe do not sleep. The people who do so many different things. Trish has her own production company, 180 Sisterhood Productions. She's an actress. She does singer impressions, podcasts. She dabbles in comedy. She's just one of those people, those hard workers uh, that are always trying to find something new and something fun to do. Without further ado, this is Trish Renone. Welcome to Geek with Dev. <laughs> I'm here joined by Trish Raynone. That's how you say it, right? I was debating on my story earlier. Raynone or Raynone. It's like tomato, tomato. There's Italian no say it. Raynone. I, I was messaging you earlier and, and we were talking yes. and I'm like, I can guarantee you we have so much in common. And so when I was doing my, my research, I guess we're calling it, interviewers, there's like, there's no real word for it. You know, it's like, like stalking, you know, doing my research on before I do this <laughs> sort of thing. Um, I love how, how when it's work, it's called research. And if it was anyone else, it would be called stalking. Pretty much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I, I, I came to the realization that um, we do have a lot in common. And, and you, what, when, I, when I look at you, there's like yes, a, there's a, a word that, that I'm trying to come up with for a, a word for it. But there's just this, these people that are constantly trying to find something new or, or trying to make something happen or make something work. And that's a little bit of your profession, right? Being um, the head of a, of a production company. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, about a year ago, my producing partner and I started a company up in my hometown, Sault Ste. Marie. Um, we also work a bit in Toronto. So we did our first short in Toronto, and now it's been doing the festival runs. And we meet a few times a week over Skype or Zoom, and we apply for grants, um, mainly to shoot projects up here in Sault Ste. Marie. So we've applied for some funding for a web series a couple feature films and uh, it's a lot of writing scripts putting together the pitch packages doing the grant applications and a lot of who knows when we're going to shoot kind of thing yeah, <laughs> will we shoot exactly. and when is always the question so yeah. waiting on people to say yes exactly yeah. especially now yeah. it's going to take kind of forever um, yeah, so we thought we'd be shooting some now, so they've been pushed like everyone else's businesses, and that's maybe a good thing. So everything will happen in the right timing, and now we have more time to do rewrites of scripts and get to know more actors over table reads on Zoom, and uh, yeah, it's going to be great. It's such good weather and good timing to actually be shooting, but you can't, and it's just kind of like you're stuck, right? Yeah, so we'll all be shooting in the winter. Yeah. When, um, yeah. what do you, you have, you have a project plan for the winter? Well, we do have a horror film we're service producing, so I'm not a writer on that one, hoping to maybe, um, act in it as well. That's kind of something we've talked a little bit about. Um, and that one we could shoot in the winter because it's mainly, mainly indoors. So we're yeah. thinking maybe, maybe this winter we'll shoot that one, hopefully. If all goes according to plan. And so you're all completely based out of Canada? Yes. Yeah, we do have some collaborations with people coming in from L.A. Um, and we're service producing uh, a couple of films in the future at some point um, with some collaborators from L.A., Toronto, Montreal. So just different areas. But um, primarily they are Canadians who have moved to L.A. Yeah, there's a, you see a lot of that. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of that. So I wanted to yeah. ask, um, I feel like when you run into someone on the street or you're talking to somebody at a convention or networking, a lot of people don't understand the gist of running a production company. So what do you tell people when they ask, you know, well, what do you do? You know, it's a little bit of everything. 
Yeah, I mean, actually, I remember, can I put on my sunglasses? Absolutely. Is that weird? Um, yeah, I remember a few years ago when I, like, even getting into film, I Googled, what does a producer do? Because it was always such a mystery. Um, but yeah, you do a little bit of everything. So if you're a creative producer who's also doing the writing or directing or acting, you, um, you create the pitch packages, the scripts. Um, you get a team of people together, some in, like a mi mix of investors, and you'll also apply for some grants. Um, you want to get close with a line producer because line producers, for a living, they do things like budgets that, to me, are terrifying. Um, yeah. And then by working closely with them, you can learn those things eventually. But it is a bit of everything. And then once you're on set, um, you're kind of responsible for things to move slowly. I mean, slowly. That was a Freudian slip. <laughs> you did not want things to run slowly. That is the opposite. Um, no, but you don't want to rush through it either. But you want things to run smoothly. And um, even if it's something like, you know, heading down to the next location and making sure it's unlocked and ready to go. And you talk to the owners of the location and you keep them calm and assure them that it's all going to be okay. Uh, it's little things like that or taking out the garbage and cleaning up at the end of the day. It's pretty much like what a production assistant does, which I used to do. And, but then more responsibility as well. So it's like a little bit of everything. Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's the yeah. fun in it, right? Is being able to do a little bit of everything instead of a lot of one thing, right? Yeah. Not getting bored. Exactly. That's key. Which is not yeah. happening right now. Everybody's getting bored now. Um, yeah. So what are the most recent films or projects that you have completed? One of the most recent. Hmm, let's see. What if as a, well, during isolation, I've done a couple of short films. Um, but normally I've never, like I've never been a cinematographer or an editor. So on those ones I had to. Um, cause there's a bunch of, uh, self-isolation film festivals going on oh, yeah. and most of them, yeah, most of them are free to submit to. So if you want to make a film, now's the time. Um, and yeah, so I shot the first one. I did a comedy mockumentary. I wrote it, shot it, edited it, all that stuff and made the poster and all, all that stuff. Um, it's in a film festival now. So I did that. That's a recent one. And then I shot a documentary with the dogs, the household dogs. And I used a DSLR for the first time myself shooting a Canon and edited on iMovie on my computer. So that was a challenge to have to do like every single aspect of the filmmaking. Yeah, it's um, a process. I got to do it yeah. every day. That's kind of what um, that's kind of what the the small shows like this. You're introduced to uh, to me by by Pete. Peter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Pop so. Turnative. He's such a great guy. He's yeah. killing it with Pop Turnative. He's I had know. Jan from The Office on recently, and all these people from Ozark. Yeah. Letter Kenny, Breaking Bad. Yeah, he's such a good, but he's he's a great person. Yeah, he is. So. He just reached out yeah. and he said, "Hey, do you want some of these interviews?" I'm like. Dude, you're, this is what you do. Why are you trying to give me some interviews? And he's like, well, you know, just, you know, help out the show. So, uh, uh, yeah, just shout out right here, right on the video that, that uh, thanks to Pop Turnative and Peter for, for hooking up a few interviews that are coming to you guys soon. But, um, hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so we, me and, uh, I call him Petey. I like to, I don't know, I just like to call him that. And, um, Petey Beats. Yeah, we've been doing uh, a, a few interviews from the show Outer Banks, too, which is cool to talk to that, those cast members. I saw that. that. I just watched the pilot the other night, and I saw that you had posted, and so did Peter. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I think those those the cast is about, they're like about to be celebrities. I was looking at their Instagrams, oh, yeah. and I feel like their following is, it's at that moment where you watch it, and you're like, it's about to blow up. Yeah, yeah. I messaged all the yeah. cast when they were at, um, I think like ten, eleven thousand followers, and then at over yeah. the, over a week they're at like four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, and it's just like wow. Yeah, that happens with those Netflix shows. Yeah, it's pretty exactly. cool. So talking yeah. about acting a little bit, you're yeah. also a bit of an actor actress yourself, and yeah. um, we discovered that we were in the same show in the same season of the oh, same okay. show. <laughs> Yeah. I know it's so funny. And now, now that I think about it, and I know that I did watch 
all of the episodes that season. So I would have seen you before. Um, and I think I can like recall. That's absolutely the crazy. Episode in my head. It's weird. I was, and it, I just happened to find the clip today. I was going through my photo backup and I thought, since I'm at home, what better time than, cause you're not out with friends creating new stuff. So I'm like, maybe I'll do some funny throwbacks to things from the past. So I was looking through my phone's backup and I found one with the actor Donald Logue that I posted yesterday. I was working a few years ago on a film in Sudbury, Ontario, and he was one of the lead actors and he was teaching me how to make snow with it. We were trying it out at the hotel. We're like, let's take a cup of hot water and see if it makes snow. And, uh, and then today I was looking and I found that paranormal survivor clips. So I posted it and then you were like, I was also on that show. Yeah. Which is so weird because we're chatting today for the first time and we I were know. like two episodes apart. I know. That was episode five and you were three, I believe. Yeah. There, it was ghost yeah. children. Like it was me and like <laughs> I, I, I cut this piece of wood and then wood flies in my eye and then I go to the hospital and it, those little, oh, um, man. what are they called? They're, they're uh, silent on camera. Those are the ones th that's what those yep. are called. Yeah. So those are fun to be in. I like I like watching them back and just be like, oh, I'm reenacting this guy's story, and it's so cool. Yeah, and you don't actually really use any words. No, not really. Or, or if you do the odd like improv words, there's no sound, so it's yeah. like a person dubbing over you or creepy music. So it's just like you're yeah. making faces and being haunted. Yeah, it was a lot exactly. of fun. So tell me a little bit yeah, about uh, your work with Actra. Oh, well, um, I joined ACTRA probably about maybe four years now. Um, produced two seasons of a web series under ACTRA with Katie Ullman called My Roommate, My Roommates and Escort. And, um, yeah, I've been cast in various films through ACTRA and, uh, have met some really good people through that as well, through that, uh, actors union for those of you. Who do not know what the heck an actra is yeah. <laughs> if you're not in the film business i guess you'd be like a what what is it yeah. is she saying yeah. actor or actra good it's been good it's led me to meet some really great people and to have some great collaborations and uh, i've also done like some actra co-ops they're called where you can work with others um as long as they're union members and it doesn't have to be on a big show so you can make like a short film together so I've done a few of those. Yeah, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. So what's Are you, your, have you joined ACRA? No, I'm non-union. Yes. I'm a non-union actor. Um, but yep. so that's one of my, that's kind of, we can talk about what do you think the benefits are of being a union actor versus being a non-union actor like myself? I just haven't had time. I've oh. just been too busy. Well, that's a good question. I mean, if it's what you want to do primarily and it's your main focus, then I think it's a great idea to be a member and, um, if you're because if you're going out for auditions for tv series the most tv series are union they're either actor or seg so and they have an agreement together actors like the canadian seg seg the american one um so you'll get um precedence is that the word i'm looking for you'll get like you'll have um seniority Oh, to someone okay. to someone auditioning who isn't non-union. So if you're auditioning, then it might be frustrating if you're non-union because you're not getting the roles because someone with seniority who's already actor gets it. Um, priority, I think that's the word I was priority, looking for. Yeah. And I mean, when you do, every time you do work, you have money that's going into RRSPs, um, so into like a retirement savings fund, which is good. And you get health benefits and you get a decent rate. Um, but there's also a lot of, I know people who do a lot of commercials who are non-union because a lot of them are non now. And, um, there's a lot of indie productions you could be a part of that once you go act right, you can't be a part of. So I don't know. I've been both and it's kind of like a catch 22 because when I was non-union, I'd always think like, oh, I would have gotten, maybe I would have gotten that if I was actor. And then sometimes the casting director would tell me your audition was great, but we had to go with an actor person. But then again, like when I was non, I didn't really always get paid. An actor yeah. regulates it and make sure you get a proper wage and that it's safe on set. I had done some kind of bad stunts on set because I felt pressured on some non-union stuff. Um, 
whereas on actor if you have to do a stunt they'll pay you more they'll have a like a very professional stunt person with you so yeah there's definitely i'd say if you love acting there's definitely perks to both and um there's definitely work out there for either world that you're in so just keep Absolutely. just keep doing it and then eventually if you feel like you're getting enough actor opportunities then maybe that's when it's time to switch over i don't know yeah. it's different for everyone um so yeah. on the the talk of doing a bunch of different things especially during quarantine to keep busy you also uh -huh. host or, or talk on a podcast is, is that's right you I have do, your own podcast. tell me a little bit about that Yes. Yeah, so there's, um, there's the one I have called your dating stories. So I have people write in dating stories. I'm on season two. That's one I created and I just kind of record by myself. So I just kind of reenact or read out the dating stories because dating stories are crazy. Everyone has yeah. a weird story. Even my mom gave me some stories for it. I was like, you went through this. That's funny. Um, <laughs> and then there's one that I'm a regular uh, host on Sabine's Fun Table and Sabine uh, Mondestin is the creator and I'm a guest on that every week but we also film that one so that's uh, we get drunk and we talk about taboo sex subjects Sabine's Fair Fun enough. Table yep that one's fun awesome or, cool. or I did drink apple juice last time and pretend that it was wine but that's our secret they don't know that they don't know I just that. wanted to see, I just wanted to see if I didn't make me say less stupid things, but I still, once you get me going, I still say really stupid things about yeah. sex and boys and yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. I like being unfiltered and I like that we're, we're living in a time now where we're encouraged to share our voices and we don't have to be quote unquote ladylike. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Just express, yeah. just go. That. I love that freedom. So I really enjoy being a part of that show. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. kind of put a cap on it. Is there anything that you want to promote or like kind of, you know, it's the plug section. Like, tell me what's coming up. What do you want to do? What's coming up? Um, you can follow my Instagram. I'm always posting things there. I feel like I'm kind of juggling a few different things. So it's hard, to, like hard to say. Yeah, I have. I'm like a, like a tiger in the wild, just trying to spread my seed all over the place. But by seed, yeah. I mean my artistic, artistic seed. So yeah, it's Trish Rainone one or Rainone one, um, R A I N O N E, and then the number one, and uh, I'll post there. Yeah, a couple of films and festivals. Uh, my roommates and escorts on SikaTV.com. Uh, what else? Yeah, just writing away and hoping to produce some things in the next year when we get out of this. And uh, yeah, just follow me on Instagram, I guess. And then what I would, my message that's not like self-pluggy would be if you've ever wanted to film make, now's the chance. You have a cell phone, make a film, get creative, get iMovie on your phone or Google a, an editing thing. Or if you've wanted yeah. to start a podcast, Google it and figure it out because it's Pretty, it's not the hardest thing to figure out. If I could figure it out, you could. So take this time to um, challenge yourself a little bit and try some new artistic outlets. You'll be very happy you did. Sweet. All right. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. my message. Stay po <laughs> staying positive during quarantine. So yeah. thanks for joining me on the show. This is Thank your you first so time. Thank you so much for having me. We're, um, we're lifelong friends now. You can't uh -huh. get rid of me. Sweet. So awesome. we'll, we'll stay connected. We've got that paranormal survivor bond. Make sure you guys follow her on Instagram. Stay up to date with all the cool artistic fun stuff and uh, some cool shows and movies coming to you very soon. Okay.